Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alana and in today's video I'm going to be giving you an updated car tour. So if you're new here, I actually lived out of my Honda Accord, my Honda named Honda, for six months out of the year last year. And I made two previous car tour videos that were really cheap ways to live in your car. So if you want to check those out, I'll link them in the cards here. But I think the build that I have now is like the best that I can get. Now why do I think this is the ultimate car setup for me? Well, that's honestly because of this bed right here, and it honestly costs less than $100 for me to make it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, also, if you're just like dying to know, I have a Honda Accord 2006. Um, I feel like it's an old car, but I locked my keys in my car recently and I couldn't break into it, so it's not that old of a car, but anyways. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below. That really helps me out on this channel and helps me to continue my travels in Rwanda. So let's go ahead and get started with the car tour. So starting with the driver's seat, there's not much really here. I mean, I guess I have my Swiss Army knife in the driver's side door and a lighter. Just to have access to one of those at all times, but uh, nothing else really exciting here, so let's move on to the seat behind me. Okay, so back here, the first thing you'll see is my hanging clothes, which are falling off, but um, these are honestly just clothes that did not fit in the drawers behind them. So this is one of the new additions, and it's just a $15 drawer from Walmart, and I have all of my shorts in here, my shirts, are all somehow all in there. <laughs> and then down here is all of my pant leggings or long pants. This is all of my socks. And down here is my Planet Fitness bag. So this has like my toiletries bag, my towel, um, a change of clothes, my lifting straps, <laughs> a lock, um, all the good things like that. Underneath that bag is a random bag of stuff, um, like supplements, Coconut oil, incense. Honestly, I don't know what's in this bag. I haven't touched this bag since I moved back into my car, so, oh well. And then down here, I just have my hiking boots and my one Chaco. If you want the story behind why I lost one of my Chacos, I'll link that vlog here. Um, and then I just have my, uh, either like my shower shoes or my water shoes, my tivas, um, my dirty laundry, delicious, my converse that I never wear anymore, and then I always keep one jug of water in here, and then the rest of the water stays in the back trunk. Also, I forgot to show you, I have my hat just kind of like strapped in with the seatbelt. I think it's really cute, and it's worked so far. Okay, I know this looks like a lot. It kind of is a lot. But I'm just gonna go over it briefly. On top here, we just have a tent. Um, I do have a list with all of the Amazon links for everything that I've purchased that's in the back of the trunk here. So that is linked down below in all of my videos. But this tent is one of them. I'll insert the video of me popping it up here. Then over here we have my water for like dishes, so it's like not drinkable water. Um, then we have my ice chest. And next to my ice chest is a Tupperware container that's full of everything I need for my kitchen. Then next to that I have a Coleman camping stove, also linked on my Amazon list. Which reminds me, I need to add this to my Amazon list. Okay, so this is a battery pack that you can use to jumpstart your car if you get stuck out in the middle of nowhere. So if I'm out camping alone in the middle of nowhere and I can't start my car because the battery's dead, this will save my ass. 
Then next to that, I have this random box, which is only for gym rats. So we have a protein shaker, protein, creatine, Gatorade powder, good salt for hydration, and liquid IV. I love that people keep driving by and they're like, hmm, what is she doing? Anyways, this is probably a little extra, this box, but... God! We have food. Now, I just use an old milk crate that was in my grandma's garage and two Trader Joe's bags to kind of divide it into two parts. So I have all of my like canned goods and bigger things and then I have all those smaller things in a smaller bag. I'm not gonna go over this in more detail. I do have a video from the past talking about foods that I take camping, so I will link that here in the cards. Then hiding down here is actually a camping chair. I didn't use this very much last year, but I'm gonna try and use it more this year because it's actually pretty convenient. I think the main reason that I didn't use it is because I don't have shade and I still don't have shade. That's the one thing that I'm still missing in this setup because it's hard to like attach shade to a, such a low car as I hunch over like an old man to speak to you in the camera. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of my invention with this ice chest this year. So last year I got sick and tired of always getting ice and then it melting and then all of my stuff getting soggy because that's like the classic ice chest struggle. And when you live with all of your food in an ice chest all the time it got kind of annoying. So I went to Walmart and I got two Tupperware containers that are this size. Now the other one is down in the bottom and it's completely frozen solid with water inside of it and it's ice. And then this one has all of my food in it and it just rests on top. And then I just have another ice pack here on the side because the plastic Tupperware containers were like a little bit too small so they keep them from rattling around. But anyways using a container that size full of ice lasted me five full days without having to refill the ice so I think that's a win and I think anyone who has an ice chest that they use full time should maybe look into doing this. <laughs> then back here I have my backpacking backpack why? I'm not sure. I just had like a hunch I would need it, so it's in here. And then I have a bag full of seashells that I'm taking to my little sister in Texas. Um, if you don't know, a sneak peek at the plan for this year. I'm driving west to Texas and then I'm driving north to Yellowstone. And then from there, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, back to the tour. Um, this here is my fun box. We have my beach blanket that I got for the Dominican Republic that actually works really well for doing yoga absolutely anywhere out like in the desert here in the forest. It's great. I love it. Then very similar to that, I have my hammock. Also love this. And I just have a blow up sleeping pad for if and when I ever do sleep in the tent. I have a travel sized yoga mat because I'm a yoga teacher. And then I have a bag. Full of rocks. Don't judge me. And I don't know if you can see that, but down there, you see the legs to the table. There's a folded table underneath all of that. I rarely use it, but it's nice to have. And then I have three drugs of drinking water back there. Um, so I refill those whenever I'm doing a house sit, like this. Oh. <laughs> now moving on over, we're now in the back passenger seat. Yes, this seat is still here. I have a meditation cushion underneath here, and then this is a piece of foam that extends all the way to the front. Um, this is a bag of books, casual. My nice comfy pillow. Then this crate is full of blankets, and when I go to go to sleep at night, I can pull out the blankets that I need, and then this crate actually collapses down, and I can just move it over so I have more space to lie down here. 
And right here I just keep a rag to like wipe down the windows because when you sleep in your car you get like condensation on the windows. Um, I guess something I forgot to show you is my window coverings. I'll show you that now. I also have bear spray right here. Just in case, you never know. Okay, so the space in the back window here, that's my yoga mat. And it's propping up the window covering that I prop up in the back window at night. And then I have similar window coverings for all the other windows. However, I really don't like these window coverings, so while I'm at this house sit, I'm actually going to be making new ones, so subscribe, stay tuned, I'll make a vlog about it, um, because those ones just aren't cutting it anymore. <laughs> and now, what everyone's been waiting for. Now, I know this doesn't look like much, but we have this two inch piece of foam here, and then I have a five inch piece of foam here that connects to the passenger seat in the back that makes it the same height. And this is just a random pillow and towel right here. And then I have this plywood because this wood connects to, I don't know if you can see that, to Tupperware containers. And in these Tupperware containers I keep all of my winter clothing because I don't need it all of the time but it's really nice to have access to it here. So this one has more of like my light sweatshirts and jackets, things that I use all the time. And then that one in the back has more of like my coats and my hats and my gloves and like specialty items like that. And then this door, I have another lighter because I have lighters all around the... Uh, and then a flashlight. And another cool rock that I picked up which is actually really cool and you should appreciate it. Come on, focus. Anyways, then in this door right here, I just have all of my watercolor stuff, as if I do watercolor painting on the road. I would like to. It's wishful thinking. So I hope that this gives you a better perspective of just like how much room I have when there's no passenger seat in here. Now, taking the passenger seat out does turn on the airbag light, which gives me a little bit of anxiety, but I know that nothing else is wrong with the airbag system and I get my car checked regularly, so I'm not too worried about it. Last thing I have to show you is this center console, so um, I guess first on top I just have my national park stickers, so last year I went to the Rocky Mountain National Park, boo, focus, there we go, Rocky Mountain National Park, and the White Sands National Park. Now I'm saving these to put them possibly on a camper or a van in the future, because while I love this setup in Rhonda, I would like something a little bigger, and by bigger I mean having the 4x4 capabilities because I could sleep in this all day long, like this is really comfortable, but I can't get to those like remote campsites that I want to get to, so stay tuned. Sometime in the future, Alana and her 4x4 vehicle call. <laughs> Anyways, underneath my sticker collection is my bathroom, I guess you could say. It's kind of weird to say that, but a female pee funnel linked on my Amazon list. I didn't use this a lot last year, but I started using it this year. I don't know why I didn't use it last year. It's fabulous. It's great. You can pee anywhere, as long as you're wearing, like, loose clothing. This doesn't really work if you're wearing, like, leggings or long pants, unless you want to, like, bare ass it. Anyways. Toilet paper. I have wet wipes in this part. You can't see it, but you, you know what I mean. Then the last thing that I have in this compartment is actually this inverter. So it plugs into the outlet in the car and I can plug in my laptop to charge my laptop. So this isn't like a permanent solution because I can only do this when the car is running. Um, which is unfortunate. So another investment that I would like to make soon is like a solar powered power bank that I can plug my laptop into because then Baby I can work from anywhere <laughs> And just a cup for water and my fanny pack this Is like my purse. I don't have a purse. I have a fanny pack. I'm an outdoorsy woman, okay? And a headlamp Again, because I'm an outdoorsy woman. Oh, and my taser. Because I'm an outdoorsy woman. <laughs> You'd be proud. I also have this little teeny tiny first aid kit. Don't you worry. 
If you want a more in-depth, like, step-by-step -step video on how I built this bed, let me know. It's really not that difficult, but I can explain it more. Don't ask me how I took my passenger seat out. I'll link the YouTube video that I used because I wouldn't be able to do anything that I do today without YouTube, honestly. Like, all of the YouTube videos that I edit and upload are only possible because of the YouTube videos that taught me how to do YouTube. So, anyways. Okay. <laughs> Tucson is a noisy city, so pardon the background noise. But I asked you guys over on Instagram if you had any questions for me. If you're not following me over on Instagram, you should go do so. But the two questions that I get asked the most frequently, I'm going to answer at the end of this video. Number one is, don't you feel unsecure, especially at night? Um, honestly... No, because my car, I can lock it and it has an alarm system built in. And like I said earlier, I locked my keys in my car and I tried to break in and I was unsuccessful. So unless someone has like a special tool to break the window, like I think I'm good. And honestly, I always park smart and I park in a way that I can hop into the driver's seat and drive away in the middle of the night if I need to. I would rather not do that, <laughs> but if I need to, there is that option as well. So, honestly, I feel more secure sleeping inside my car than I do inside of a tent camping, you know? Oh, I guess this is three questions. <laughs> Next question is, what's the shower and toilet situations? Ha <laughs> ha. So I guess I already showed you my toilet situation. I have toilet paper and the pee funnel and then the bags for poop. Ideally, I would also have a shovel because if you dig six inches down, then you can just poop out in nature. If I'm not out in nature and I can't use those things, um, I mean, Walmart, always a good option. There's... And then for showers, I'm always at Planet Fitness, and some Planet Fitnesses are 24 hours, so like if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to pee, you can just go to a Planet Fitness if you're parked like in a city, stealth camping. Which leads me into the final question, which is, do you usually park and use free campsites? And the answer is yes. Um, I usually use the app iOverlander, and sometimes it's hit or miss, so they have a lot of campsites that are free and easy to access and there's others that maybe people have parked there overnight and gotten away with it but you shouldn't do it or um there's also spots on there that people put and you have to have like four by four vehicle clearance to be able to get there and obviously Rhonda the Honda can't do that so <laughs> the way that I do it is that I when I have free time I just sit on iOverlander and I sort through and I find all of the potential parking spots that I looking at Google Maps on satellite feel like I can drive through drive to in my car and I can confirm it's either on state land or BLM land or national forest land those are usually the three easiest for sure ways to know that you can legally park there for free. Have I parked in places that I legally shouldn't have and gotten away with it? Yes. Um, if you want to park in neighborhoods overnight for free, my tip is always to park like next to bushes or a fence or like not the front of someone's house, obviously, and park in a neighborhood where there's other cars already parked on the street, preferably a neighborhood where you see another van or a similar vehicle where people are already sleeping in their car on the street. I only do this if it's like after dark and I don't want to drive way out of the town to a nature spot out in the national forest so I try not to do this um, also Cracker Barrel is a great option because they legally will allow you to park in the back of their parking lots in almost every location you can call beforehand similar to Walmart but Walmart's hit or miss sometimes they're like really mean about it and they're like no we don't want you here um, but Cracker Barrel is almost always really nice about it then also if need be truck stops have both pay showers if you don't have a Planet Fitness membership like I do. That's where I shower all the time, but you can shower at truck stops. That's what some people do. You can sleep at truck stops. I've never done that, but I know that some other car life people do that. Also, if I'm on a cross-country road trip, say driving to Texas, like I will be. In Texas, there's not as much BLM land, so in places like that, I really rely on rest areas to sleep overnight because that's a legal place where you can pull over on the side of the road and sleep in your car for a little bit. 
not everybody has a full-on mattress in their car, but you know, I'm special, so. If you stuck around to the end of this video, I appreciate you. And leave me a comment down below letting me know that you're still here. <laughs> and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below. That really helps me out. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye guys.